Thanks for staying with us. So a Nollywood actress has slammed adults who are over 30 years, saying that they can't, yeah, they can't stop asking their parents for money at the age of 30. According to her, she described it as a shame for people at that age to be asking their parents for money. Hmm. Do you agree with her? At what age should we be financially independent, especially in Nigeria? Abroad, we know that young kids from 18, they kick you out. <laughs> but here, you are in a parent's house, I mean, and you stay on, and people wonder, okay, at what age do you begin to become independent of your parents? You can call us on 081-270-5367-091-390-7694H. You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your messages. I remember when I was, um, when I finally turned 18, you know, and my brother was so happy, you know, there was this excitement. Oh, you're not 18 adult. You know, did everything they was supposed to do for me. And at the end of the day, he now told me, well, so um, phone bills, I'm going to start paying that. Uh, <laughs> he said, I should, should be sharing the, the bill for me. Because wow. every day we call him Nigeria. Okay. This is the amount. So we're going to extract your own calls. Mm. And this is how much and you're you going to be paying. So you pay your voice. So you now know. Mm. Then when it was time for me to go to school, OK, you get your own apartment. We'll support you. You know, it was like a coming of age. So mm. I had to move in with people and share, you know. So, but, but in Nigeria, we don't have that culture. We, we, it's, 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 more, it's more honorable for you to stay home till you get married. Yeah. You know, it's, the, it's an honorable Women. thing for you to do. Like, mm -hmm. you, are, you are here. You are, your husband found you here. Or you, are, you married from your home, you know? That kind of thing. Is that what we want to preach? I don't want to focus so much on what she said, but the culture. Is this some of the culture we want to start reviewing? Or mm -hmm. we think it's something we should keep? OK, let me even start by saying that uh, I'm very conscious of making blanket statements because mm. may life not happen to us mm. may life not happen to us everybody you know, has, yes, has <laughs> hopes and aspirations on how they yeah. want their children to turn out and then you do your best you give them the education you make sure that they are okay and out of seven you have one now decides to go the other way and probably is not able to do it. Because I have uh, people around me who have seen that they have raised these kids. They raised them in under one roof. It's not like there was a stepmother or a stepfather anywhere. It was the normal, perfect nuclear, perfect family. nuclear family. And one child just decides to be useless. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it. And you see mommy running to church to pray, what is happening to this, my son. And it's not because they did not try for those kids to be able to stand on their own feet by 30. But they have done everything. And someone, someone clog in the wheel just appeared and decided to, this is how I want to live my life. Everyone should face the other way, you know? So, but um, as parents, I think there's something they didn't teach us growing up, which is how to um, make money and handle money even as children. So a lot of us get into school, finish school before we're even realizing how to start understanding money, the value of money, how to work for money and all of that. But um, to be deliberate in how we raise our children, we need to start paying attention mm. to all of those things. How do your children relate with money? Do you give them money education? Do you give them financial intelligence? Some of us are learning this at old age mm. now. So we need to you know, do all that we can. But if a child, chooses to go the other way. It's only prayer. You can't sit at home and be yeah. insulting somebody that you are still collecting money from your father at 30. You really mm. do not understand what is happening. OK, mm. Mary, what are your thoughts on this? Because here, we don't, our kids don't go <clears throat> for summer, summer. They don't, they don't, yeah. they don't, they don't work during summertime. Yeah. We don't just hang out and play. Mm. So a child who has never worked all their life, how do you expect a person to leave home yeah. at a certain age? Yeah. So um, that's part of um, that culture, the Western culture that I, I, I truly admire, that a child, no matter the home, so it's not that you're from a rich home or a poor home. You take out one year. They take out the gap year. Some of them just go on their own, get jobs. Some of them also, um, during holidays, they do the summer jobs. And I love the fact that when you're 18, you just know that you have some responsibilities. may not necessarily mean taking you out of your house, but mm. you know that now you live in this house, you pay the bills. It goes a long mm. way in shaping you into becoming very responsible. Mm. And... Um, you know, to be fair to our culture, so I, I've seen this work out in many ways, just not as, um, it's not just as uh, played, played, it's not played out um, deliberately in Nigerian culture as it is abroad. So you see people who their parents maybe sell in the market, their children do all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From, they, follow, they follow mommy to the market, they know all the places that she goes to buy mm -hmm. for wholesale, they know how to retail, they know the price, they know how to market. 
So you know that part of if you have your child be a part of your business, of your, com you know, whatever it is you're doing, the child just naturally learn all the skills and becomes more responsible. So it's just that we don't make, it's, it's not something that we, we have made it like a, a deliberate thing, but we actually do it. People, carpenters, you see their babies with little hammers just following them, and before long, they're able to do things, mechanics. We do that with our children, but most times we do them with our, the children that come from maybe a, a socioeconomic class yeah. that you know they can't yeah. afford. Yeah. But I think it is important that we um, well, Mara, imbibe what this you're culture. Saying, mm. Let me be sure, because it seems that, so it's not that they were moving out, it's like making the children responsible. Yes, so even, even while they're so they are staying home till 30, yes. but you are responsible doing something. Maybe yes. that's an interesting mm. angle. Yes, um, okay, Hima. So. Uh, Miriam just took everything out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. We well, want to say it. We have our differences and our cultures are different. So a child, unmarried female, below 30, you know they live in Papa House here. So it's just, you just don't just go and live alone. You, well, should we should we review that? Uh, even the people are because reviewing the 25 year old is an adult. The, the, the demands, sure adult. The, the, if you even if you even even while we're reviewing it, the demands are the same. So you either leave home to school, hostel, and all of that. You come back. If you do have a job far from your parents' house, you can actually share. Or, but it's hard to see you just go and get a place. You either stay with relatives. And we had our culture. We had our reasons. You know, a lot of things are happening today were not happening then when we maintained it. I know that when I left my parents' house, I stayed with Auntie Bimbo and I maintained. <laughs> yes, I stayed with her and I maintained. And they want to be sure when they ask her, I am there at night. And I'm there in the morning. And I'm there, you know, so I had someone to answer to. And it made me a much... More, uh, better person. I think that's what I would copy for my child. I wouldn't mm. just say, ah, Madam, you are now free. Go and be doing what you like. You know, mm. But I, as a young girl, mm. at nine, I'd been grinding pepper for my mother. Yeah. She was an elero. Mm. So by the time I was 16, if you count money, I don't know master, but I know money. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time I was 16, I, like I had a business plan. Mm. I started a business, mm. even without funds. I started with about 10,000, and then I moved into a bigger business that I had no funds. But I had a, another, a friend's mom who thought, ah, this girl is very like that. Let me give her mm. the opportunity. Uh, Elijah, Elijah Davis, my Larissa, so would give me goods from the island. I would sell them in school. I would bring back to her. Mm. And my parents saw me do all of that, and they encouraged it. I had the savings. I would do their job. I would do all of that growing up. Wow. And then they would make sure in the house you had a role. It was my own role to deal with Nepa. The bills that come every month, the payment of it. It wasn't exactly my money I was paying, but I would be the one to go and queue at the office. If they had questions relating to Nepa in my house, I had a folder, a file. Why I put every bill paid every month. So when the accounts were changing then, in the old days, PhD, and I know you the could phone, track it. I had the file for every of the bills paid. Mm. And my father would say, Nepa, you have come. One minute. Nima. Nima. <laughs> you come and answer for that. Mm. So everybody in the house had one duty. Or the other. Or the other. Mm. But I, I went to visit a cousin. And it pains me. Because their parents are as more, even much more hard working than mine. But these children are so entitled. Mm. As they're even going into their 20s, the demands just continue. Abia. So my friend is having a party. Mommy! Money for their shabby. Oh, you know my friends are going to laugh. In what? my father's house, you earn it. Mm. I had my shabby's paid for by my dad, but I earned it. Mm. I could say, ah, the wedding mm. is coming. And you have to give two months' notice ahead of any but place you let, 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 so me come, let me come to this because question and answer. we have, I mean, recently, I had an abroad that stays in my house. You know, <coughs> and, you know, her mom knows she stays with me. And then she comes to me and said, oh, girl, she wants to get her own place. And immediately I understood. For me, I was happy because I felt that I have been through this phase where you are itching. You want to get out. You yeah. want to be able to go to clubs without anybody telling you, what I'm, where are you, where are you? So I had that phase in my life. So I allowed her. But when I shared with people, they're like, ah, why would you allow her to go? Yeah, Let her stay under that. your house. At least under, she's just 22. Where she go? What, 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 what's she looking for? So as much as, yes, I, I, I supported her to become independent because I wanted her to pay her bills, see how it is. Oh, Eventually, she, she might come back and say, ah, I can't Thank handle you. it. But mm -hmm. I felt that it was important for me to let her go. Mm -hmm. Let her see the world, and then she needs to come back. But why, why are parents scared of taking that leap, or allowing their children to take that leap of, go out? Yeah. Must you stay in the house all this while? No, mm. so things are changing really fast, and it would be unfair to us and our children if we do not adjust certain things about our culture. Um, you know, they say when you are taught in school, there's always a time for you to write the examinations. 
and when you're, you're asked mm. to write that examination, your teacher will not be there pointing to you the answers. You have to figure it out yourself. So what I see is because of the way our culture is very closely knitted, we like to you know, brood over our children and before we want to release them, even the men that are getting, I remember when my husband wanted to get married at uh, 20 something, he was like, no, you have to be 30 first to get married and everything. It was difficult for them to release him. Really? You know? <laughs> yes, yeah, so even while he was working and everything, because he was still in the house. You know, we, we, we like to just, it's our culture anyway, and it has served us, but now we need to start reviewing going forward. How is it serving us? So we end up having a lot of uh, children who feel that they can always run to mommy and daddy to get things. And if anything happens, there's always one support or the other. And then something happens and you lose those parents and you see them struggling because mm. they've not mastered the act of staying alone and building themselves. Mm. So as an adult, even if you do not release them, but if a child says, like now that we are here, we're not hoping they will say, but if they say, okay, at 25, mom, I have a good job, I have this, I have that, can I move out? I will respect you and say, okay, if that is what you want, I'll, you move out, you can move out. Because I trust that the things, the little virtues you have picked for me, you should be able to. Let mm. me see you even operate in the real world without mommy mm. and daddy and see how you turn mm. out. Yeah. So I, I, l let me release myself yeah, to right. allow you do oh, that. Right. Right. So, so for me, I'm one of those people that encourages and I really love the fact that a young person can leave home and go and find their feet. Mm. You make mistakes, but you know yeah. you're right. You know what you know what right behind you. You know what to do. You know where to come back home to. So it's important, and I see it for children who are independent, young. Mm. When you interact with them, there are some things for those of us who were so protected, so you shielded. know, shielded. There are things like I want to go to the market. Looking, who will go with me? Yeah. For those who will be independent, they get up, they do it, and they're done. They may make mistakes, but they learn from their mistakes. And you are not even allowed to make any mistakes. Yeah. I would like to have a child who is that way inclined, mm. who is like, I'm ready. And I'm not saying a person who is badly behaved and is trying to run away from responsibilities no, at home you. just so that you want to go and party or club. But because you know that, see, I'm earning some money, or, or I have a job here. It will be easier for me to get a house closer to my job. Mm. This. Mommy, please, can I have yeah. this? And yeah. if you cannot even parent, I'll parent, but I know that you're paying for your light bill, mm. you're paying you're for taking food, care you're taking care of, you're putting you know, petrol yeah, in your car. Like, we're talking I about love having that. PAs. I mean, when the PAs are sharp, sharp, I yeah. understand. Where because, will they learn it from? Yeah. Where they learn it from? It's a little sharp, sharp, but yeah. all those nice mommy, mommy, they, they can't do that. They, they can't yeah. do that yeah. sharp work he's going to do. Let's go to the program. We come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, so we're just talking about mm. having setting a child free. Mm. And I would I'd like us to go to the angle of a mother's worst fears. Mm. When you allow a child 22, 23, say, you know, mommy, I have a good job. I'm working at the bank. I can afford to have an apartment. I want to live on the island. I have a car. You know, and the mother says, okay, I'm letting you go. But there's that fear of, okay, you have bad friends. People take advantage of you. Men come to the house anytime. You know, how would you get, how would a man see you and still want to be, make you a wife? When he sees that you are already you are free for all, and that, that's that's a mentality mm -hmm. an average have. parent would have in Nigeria. That, ah, so you're now the person that they don't come into the house anytime. Men are here, women are here, and they are partying. You don't look responsible anymore. You know. So those fears are those fears valid today? I mean, are these fears are these fears that we can we can talk about? Where our parents can say, you know, can we begin to review our fears? How do we allay the fears of parents who feel this way? And that's why they're restricting their children. From getting that independence there, there's no there's no perfect answer for that so may we not regret the decisions mm. that we make Amen. concerning our children Amen. but you know for one who wasn't released at all it was i think release was gradual so a lot of things that i did under their watch i, I appreciate that i did them and i could find someone say to me ah, you do this one well soon and when did, i'm dealing with the consequences they say she be you have learned you know shopping alone was early Saving the money towards it was also early. So as my mother's a uh, little girl, we earned 10, 10 naira per day. Mm. So I had a savings. And my best friend, Eniola, then would, would put it together. We'll, when it's bad every day, we'll go to shopping together. We'll make some choices. We'll come home. My mother will say, you open your eye, buy this thing. You get sense, so? <laughs> so the next time I went, I want to do something impressive. Yeah. And you never bought me to impress my mother. Mm. Never. So to, to do, tomorrow I have the fears yeah, of buying it. So some, some things yeah. you would say around your child mm. that would... Completely discouraged them. See, tomorrow now, mm. I can't price it. Let me take this call. I come tomorrow. Good morning. Are you there? Dorcas? Yes? You're live. Go ahead, please. 
sweet voice. Yes. Okay, good morning. Morning. Good morning, Doka. It is my first time calling. Welcome. 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 Okay, so um to contribute on the topic, yes. I think this thing depends on so many as so many factors. Go ahead. Hello? We can hear you very clearly, Dorcas. Please Hello? go ahead. Oh, She's probably listening to the TV yeah, and it's really yeah. delayed. When you so, call the television, it's delayed when you get to the house. So just yeah. go ahead. Yeah, Amaya. so I was going to say that, uh, you know, when a child decides to leave home, as you say, it's in stages and it's in phases. So mm -hmm. you're not going to send a child that you know that not is ready. fully dependent and not ready out. So for my son, he'll be turning 10 towards the end of the year. And... One of the gifts he's getting is that he'll be moving into his own room. He shared a room with his, daughter, with his sister his forever. So he'll be moving into his own room. And this year, his goal is to make sure that this room that he shares with his sister is always kept clean. The shoes are kept well. His wardrobe <laughs> is neatly arranged. The cupboard. And he takes it seriously, seriously. because he wants to move into his own room. Mm. And he knows to move into his own room. Whatever he wants the color of the wall to be and everything that choice? he wants, the idea of that room is his. Mm. So he's working towards it. And because of that, I have a boy... He's paying attention to keeping his um, room wow. clean. The other day he was saying, Mommy, I've just arranged this whole place. I'm I keeps messing it up. Yes. Now, he also understands what it takes for other people to clean up after him. And he mm. messes up. So he respects mm. people. He understands that when someone is sweeping, you give some time. And then when you drop something on the floor, you yeah. pick it up. Mm. So that is what you do with a child. Over and over, you're building this child. So when they get to an age, and then you hope by, you know, as mm. you said, you hope to God that it, Days, it sticks, yes. and then they run with it. Yes. It's so heartbreaking when you do all this, the and then it does not turn out. Child comes, yes. gets an apartment and becomes something else. Yeah. Because you, you, for you, you feel like I have protected this girl all her life. Mm. I want you to live here and just go and meet you, go to your husband's house. Yeah. At least I know you are safe. <laughs> but that one that you be in an apartment by yourself. Right, yeah. hey. <laughs> we just like to deceive ourselves as Nigerian parents. Mm. Under your nose, things are happening. Hey, Under your Jesus. nose, things are pulling. <laughs> Under your nose, things are missing. Hey, People are jumping out of the window. Under your nose, things are happening. Yeah. Yeah. What we have where your nose is not there. No, no, no. So the thing is, so, no, listen, listen. Hey, hey. Let me give you two scenarios. Yeah. So um, I had a friend who the parents were free. So she could bring her friends home, yeah. whether it's a boy or a girl. Right. Mommy, daddy knows her friends. You know, she would tell them she's going to a party. They would drop her in front of the party, pick her up and all of that. And to God, this girl was intact throughout the university. Mm. And she wears skimpies. In fact, when she comes to my house, my father would be eyeing her like, why is this girl always dressing yeah, her? <laughs> but she was a very good girl. Mm. So the idea was she knew that I could always tell mommy anything. Right. And her mother would give her the right advice. I would always tell mommy, yeah. I have this crush, somebody's this, yeah. somebody that they would talk about it. She was free to go out yeah. and so she didn't see those things as something forbidden that yeah. she would be itching. To. No, 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 hold on, no. Then we now had the other friend who if you as much as do bye bye, they will carry cutlass and chase you. <laughs> Nobody was allowed to come close. But that's the one that. So she now skipped. in the house. Uh -huh. She would go to school and go to other places and was doing things. She was badder than the one who had that free hand. <laughs> yes, bad. Yes. Yes. Take this call. Yemi has been holding. <laughs> Are you there, Yemi? Oh, yes. Good morning. Good morning. You're alive. Go ahead, please. All right. I'd like to contribute. To... Please do. Okay. I'd like to take myself as an example. Growing up. Same with my parents. I remember the first time I got that feeling in the The first thing my dad told me was, he's sending me to school to read. So the freedom of this that he didn't allow people, my parents, to. And now I'm married. I can say that I became aware of myself and my financial status when I got married. Because mm. so they didn't allow me to be free, first of all. They didn't allow me to explore, to go for internship, to just be a boy. You want to provide for you. So now that I'm grown and I have a junior brother and they want to pass the same thing to my senior brother, I have to call in and see, okay, during this strike and all it was, I have to tell him, go and learn the skill. Mm. Go and do this. Try and, and learn to, because my friends, they are not friends, they don't friends. So I'm like the one that is Damn. very social and I have to what I have to do that came from the type of family I would have worked as I have 
Thank you, Yemi. The, the, the line is a bit blurry. We didn't hear you properly. I think but she was saying something about how she was put inside the house caged. all through caged. And then they wanted to use the same method for her younger brother. And so she had to tell her brother that go out there, learn a skill, don't just stay within and all of that. So but let me quickly land what I was saying before Amorayo took the call. So um, it's important that we teach the virtues, release them a bit. Let them test mm -hmm. it. Let them make their mistakes. From their mistakes, you know what you need to handle work on. more. What you need to work on, what you can point them to. You teach again for a bit, you release them. But if you say, okay, because I want to really protect you and hold them, you can't tell when finally they leave how they would act mm. with mm. all the things, whether they learned it, whether they were paying attention and all of that. So it's time that we learn to, as parents, I know you love them, but release them a bit, test them. It's enough releasing of children when you allow them. In fact, sexual education in Nigeria is release. It's release. So the child that goes and comes back, you can then help. Mm. You can supervise. The child can, if, and if you have the kind, well, some relationships where you can talk without being judged. So I have every toaster's discussion with my auntie, with my father. I knew that nobody was judging me. They'll be laughing when you one more, you know? <laughs> so my mistakes were sharing easily. Mm. But I saw my dad rea dad's reaction, even though he trusted what he had done. One time when we were living in Nibai Estate. So a lot of Lasso students then I had not gotten admission had their hostels in the estate. And one evening, he sat with my mom at the shop. A parent dropped her child. They called her cousin and said, she'll be staying with you because they want her to be free and all of that. And by the evening of the third day, the cousin had introduced the girl to the call girl service. What? And when they dropped her off, it was on my dad's way to Subway early morning prayers. And he cried when he came home. He said, are you sure you girls want to go to school? Are you sure? This is someone who thought he had done well with his children. I was like, mm, why would okay. he be the person? You know, I don't want to give you to anybody. So for me, my mom felt Aunt Mimbo had a mentorship role to play in my yeah. life. Mm. So staying in her house, yes, I had my toasters. In fact, they were coming to her house. Yeah, I would sit, sit down and discuss, if I, you mm. know. So I think guidance for a child mm. All Even through. when they are with you or not, it's extremely important. And yeah, if it takes you releasing them, not at all. It's okay. Talking about ah. that, I know, I know, I know, and I know <laughs> the mother who, when her daughter went out, I think it was uh, 24 or something like that, you know, she was very reluctant. She didn't want that child to leave the house at all. And the condition was that I'll have a, I'll have a key to your apartment. Mm -hmm. I'll, I can go in anytime. anytime. You know that, and you know. So she closed monitored. The child. So any day while the child is in school, she can stop by, mm -hmm. cook up some food, sure. make sure that the girl, you know, just sort out the house for the girl. The girl will come back home and say, ah, mommy has been here. So she was, she was alone, but not alone. The mother comes around and checks on her. So just like you said, you can allow them a bit, but give them boundaries yes. and then gradually to the point that That's they are the not and able continue to, be to in share your mistakes with them. Mm. There was a nasty experience. My mom had shared an experience she had as a girl with me. And I went out with a friend. And she was saying, we're well, just going for a party, only for us to get there. We were just two girls at this party, four mm. guys. And my friend got up and said, eh, my mom sent me on an errand, so we'll see at home. Hey. When I told my mother at home, I'm following you. We go together, we follow everywhere. Are you crazy? Yeah. Because if she <laughs> left, as she was planning to leave me, I just went back to my mother's stories. My mom could tell stories yeah. forever. That, me, four guys. But I was no, no, you paying attention. Yeah. Paying attention.